very good morning to you and happy Mother's Day. Let me precede the service with some words from the father of our country, George Washington. My mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. I am what I owe. I owe what I am to my mother. I attribute all my success in life to the moral, intellectual, and physical education I received from her. And he was, and she was, an Anglican. And her foundation was on Jesus. So we'll open the service this morning with the hymn, O oh, Love of God, How Strong and True. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into 
to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is psalm number 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your distress, in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower and of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, Though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. And for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them hum stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Standing the hymn is, Come my way, my truth, my life.
reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus told his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, you there, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? And you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Come Holy Spirit, come and fill my mouth with your word and open our hearts to hear it. Open our ears to hear it and our hearts to receive it. That we might be transformed through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our lives built on a strong foundation, that foundation of the way, the truth, and the life. You all may have heard or more likely have seen an image of a man named Charles Atlas. Uh, Atlas was a mythical person uh, that was extremely strong and he supposedly held up the world in its place. So Charles Atlas was a man in the early part of the last century who was a weakling. And he was uh, in his late teens and uh, very uh, embarrassed and, and sick about his, his thin stature and his weakness and people always making fun of him and so he decided that he would be like Charles Atlas, that, that he would be like Atlas, the Greek character, and build himself up strong. And so he stood in front of the mirror in his bedroom every day and looked at his body and started exercising, working out, and building himself up. And week after week after week, he did his special exercises to help himself get stronger, and he would go back to that mirror and look in the mirror and uh, see how he was developing and got, got more and more enthused and, and, and uh, excited about what was happening with all the hard work that he was doing. And uh, finally, he came to that day where he said, wow, my biceps are huge. My muscles are uh, muscles on muscles. My stomach looks like the waves of the ocean. And, and he was really happy with himself. And a couple days later, 
he collapsed. And they took him to the doctor. And the doctor said, well, the upper half of your body is fine. But your legs and your ankles are so thin and so weak that they can't even hold you up anymore. You see, when he was looking at the mirror, he saw only from his waist up. And that's all he worked on. His foundation was only halfway there. And so it is with us, with our lives, our foundation must be complete. Our foundation must be built on Jesus. And I propose to you that our mothers have a foundation that's built on Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Although we may not be fully aware of it, I assure you, it's there. I cannot help but think of my mother on this day, that uh, she died three years ago now, and uh, very close to Mother's Day. And I think of her in my upbringing, and I think of the way that she lived, the way that she had her foundation, and, and we saw it in her, but it wasn't something that was out there and obvious. She didn't uh, lead us in long family prayers over the evening meal. She didn't talk to us about Jesus or even about our faith. She didn't sit us down and read the Bible to us. She made sure we went to Sunday school. She treated every single person with respect equally. She helped other people regardless of where they came from or who they were. She saw in each one of her children and in everyone around her, the very best that there was, and encouraged us and lifted us up. She introduced us and led us to God through her example of her very life, and particularly through her music. She was a musician, a soloist, in the church choir. And there was no moment more special than when we as our kids and, and our father sitting on the front row of the church would settle back and get ready for the choir's special presentation, the offertory, in which my mother often had a solo. And as she sang, you could see Christ glow in her eyes, in her smile, in her presentation. You heard the word of God as she sang. Our mothers Our mothers have built their lives on Jesus in many different ways, imperfectly, because we're all imperfect. But mothers, I encourage you to build your lives always on Jesus. Jesus is the way, Jesus the truth, Jesus life itself as God intends for us to live life. Live your faith. Let your children know in whatever way is appropriate and right for you your love for Him, your love for God. And let them know that it comes from following Jesus. When you do this, when you have done this, and in the future, Everyone will see that our children, following your example, will live with Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life.
Thank you. Amen. Before I finish, I would like to have a special prayer for mothers at this time. So, uh, those of you that are in homes where mom is, I ask you now to draw close to her, to put your hands on her, to hug her as I say this prayer. Let us pray. Lord God of the universe, you created and brought forth all things. You have given us mothers who, like yourself, bring forth life. Like you, our mother has nursed us, nurtured, and tenderly cared for us. Feeding and clothing us, our mother has drawn us to her side, giving us her very life and leading us to life in Jesus. Grant that we should honor her and love her to her benefit and to your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Service continues now with the Apostles' Creed, all standing together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue our prayers responsively using Form 3. <clears throat> Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop Bishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, our bishops Andy, Jeff, Hector, and Kay, and all bishops, for our vicar Bill, and all priests and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for our President Donald, for Congress, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them.
We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially those in need of healing. Elsa, Sylvia, Judy, Maria, Jairo, Maria, Rosa, Nicole, Adam, Ariel, Jacqueline, Maria, Sherry, Josefina, Susan, Duke, Irvi, Maria, Jennifer, Vincent Jr., Rebecca, Jan, Teofilo, Martha, Catherine, Yenis, Tina. Please add those that you know of who are sick and need God's healing power. We pray for our missionaries in Honduras, the Miller family, Mike, Kim, Liliana, and Catherine, and Monette Tate, and especially in their dealings with the coronavirus in this current time. Pray for the churches in Danvers, Massachusetts. We hold up our bishops committee as they continue to make important decisions uh, about uh, carrying on with the activities of the church. Abby, Alejandra, Carmen, Elsa, Gwen, and Mercedes. Pray for our soldiers, Ryan, Alejandra, and Ashley. We thank you, Lord, for those celebrating their birthdays this week, Aurora and Raphael. We thank you for the gift of flowers to celebrate our mothers. Please add your own thanksgivings and petitions aloud or in your hearts right now. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also you. with you. Please greet one another with God's peace. Our closing hymn is Jesus Lives.
and a few announcements. First is, in your celebration of our mothers, please be safe. If you go out, please wear a mask. I know a lot of people are not, but we'll be sorry if we continue that kind of behavior. So please wear a mask when you go out and stay safe. All of our youth from uh, sixth grade up are going to be receiving an invitation, perhaps a phone call parents. You, it'll probably go through you uh, to get your uh, children involved in the 30-hour famine, which is coming up in June. It's an activity that we will not be coming here to the church, which we usually do, but it'll be uh, virtual online activities with activities in the homes themselves. And I hope you will participate with your children as they go through this. The yard sale? Ah, yard sale. A few of you have dropped off items, so uh, we can continue to do that. And uh, eventually we will schedule uh, the yard sale to happen. Uh, as far as services go, we will continue in this form. Uh, I had originally set the date of Mother's Day as the possibility of coming back and being in church together. Obviously, that did not happen. Uh, and then I set the possible date of Pentecost, which is the last Sunday of this month. And that's not going to happen, but I feel pretty certain that it's going to happen in June. And uh, it will be different, but we'll do it. We'll make it happen. So let's have our dismissal. Ready? Alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. God bless you. Have a great day.